Today we're going to be looking at three serial killers who have still not been apprehended as of January 2022. This video contains some graphic details some viewers may find disturbing, so viewer discretion is advised. And before we start, if you're interested in stories from the dark side of life, please remember to like and subscribe so you can be the first to hear about all our future videos. Okay, let's crack on. Our first serial killer is active in Long Island, New York, and he's been given the simple moniker of the Long Island Serial Killer. He's believed to have murdered as many as 16 people between 1996 and 2010, and he disposes of their bodies on remote beaches along the south shore of Long Island. Now, despite extensive searches, the culprit has never been found and is possibly still active to this day. So what type of victim does the Long Island serial killer target? Well, most of the victims have been sex workers who have advertised their services on Craigslist, and the majority of the women killed are Caucasian. Once he's killed them, usually through strangulation, he typically dismembers their bodies before placing the remains in sacks along the beaches. The discovery of the Long Island serial killer has somewhat of a bizarre backstory. On the night of May the 1st, 2010, 24-year-old escort Shannon Gilbert arrives at a client's property. At first, things seem normal until Shannon begins to behave erratically. She makes a panicked phone call to 911 in which she tells the operator, They're trying to kill me. Now, you would assume from this call that the client has endangered Shannon's life and she's begging the operator for help. But that's not the case. The client himself contacts one of Shannon's friends and arranges for him to collect the distressed woman. However, before he's arrived at the property, Shannon has already fled. Now, nobody knows exactly what happens to Shannon in the immediate aftermath of her disappearance, but unfortunately she is discovered deceased the following year, in December 2011. Although it's not confirmed that she's a victim of the Long Island serial killer, many suspect that she is. And it's during the initial search for Shannon back in 2010 that the authorities make a grim discovery that there's a serial killer at large. In December of that year, a policeman makes a horrific discovery. There are skeletal remains of a woman found discarded in a bag on a beach along Ocean Parkway in Suffolk County. And, as if that wasn't bad enough, a further examination of the crime scene reveals the remains of three more women close by. So at this point, they know there's definitely a serial killer at work. Over the next few months, detectives discover a total of 10 bodies scattered along beaches along the highway. And the youngest of these victims was only around two years of age. The deaths have all been attributed to the same killer. And, grim as these official statistics already are, things might actually be worse than our current understanding. You see, throughout New York State, there are another six victims this killer is suspected of murdering. Do we have any idea of who the killer is? Well, although nobody has been officially charged with the murders, there are a few prime suspects. John Biltrolf is one such man. He was convicted of two murders in 2017 when his DNA was found on the bodies of two of the murdered women. And the methods he used to kill them bared the hallmarks of the Long Island serial killer. Rita Tangredi and Colleen McManee were both sex workers who he assaulted and strangled before discarding of their corpses in a wooded area on Long Island. 
Bitroff also lived close to the crime scenes, and his job as a carpenter would have given him easy access to all the tools which were needed to dismember the bodies of the victims. One of the victims, Rita, was also best friends with Melissa Bartholomew, who was the first woman discovered on the beach during the search for Shannon. So, there is a strong link there. Another strong suspect in the case is James Burke, who was the police chief at Suffolk County Police during the time of the murders, and he blocked the FBI from getting involved in the investigation. In November of 2016, Burke was sentenced to 46 months in a federal prison for assault and conspiracy. The attorney for one of the victims was told by an escort that she believes Burke could be guilty of the murders. She stated that she had witnessed Burke being aggressive to women in the past, including dragging one to the ground by her hair. And she had first-hand experience of his brutality. During one sexual encounter, he yanked her head back with such force that she began to tear up. And after that traumatic incident, she certainly believes he's capable of such crimes. As of January 2022, the Long Island serial killer is still on the loose, and there is a $25,000 reward for his capture. Let's hope that happens sooner rather than later. Unlike the Long Island serial killer, who hasn't been linked to any murders since 2010, our next killer is still claiming lives as of 2021. Known as the Chicago Strangler, the killer has been active for two decades and has claimed an estimated 75 victims. I say killer, but there is a possibility that the string of murders could be the work of more than one person. However, Chicago police are now leaning towards one person being the culprit. The Chicago Strangler is believed to have started killing back in 2001, and the MO of the killer, or killers, is simple. Young black women and girls are targeted on the streets of southwest Chicago. The victims are usually sex workers, and after they've been beaten and strangled, they are discarded in abandoned buildings, garbage bins, and parks. In 2007, two women were killed within two days, had their bodies placed in garbage cans, and were set alight. One of the women was 21-year-old Teresa Marie Bunn, who was eight months pregnant when she was murdered. Some speculate that the two women could have been murdered by people who were known to them. However, many believe they are the work of one man, the Chicago Strangler. So are these unlucky women the victims of just one madman or multiple deranged killers? Although that's yet still to be determined, computer analysis of the murder patterns does suggest that one person is responsible. This analysis, known as the Murder Accountability Project, a thorough examination of data, victim profiles, locations, killing methods, etc., does indeed point to only one person as having perpetrated the murders. And the Murder Accountability Project has a good track record. Its accuracy assisted in the capture of another serial killer, Gary Ridgway. Although nobody has been arrested for the crimes, there is a potential suspect. In January 2020, the Chicago Police Department arrested Arthur Hilliard for the murder of 21-year-old Diamond Turner that had occurred three years previously in 2017. Diamond is a presumed victim of the Chicago Strangler, and there is a lot of evidence that could link Hilliard to the crimes. Hilliard had been in a relationship with Diamond, 
and prior to the discovery of her body, neighbours had seen him cleaning bloodstains around his home before disposing of a mattress shortly afterwards. Diamond had also received a blunt trauma to her head and placed inside a trash can behind Hilliard's apartment. As you may recall, these two methods of murder have occurred in many of the killings. Although many suspect Hilliard of being the serial killer, senior law enforcers in Chicago's police department have rejected him as a potential suspect, and that's assuming there is only one man responsible for these murders. Until the case is resolved, the demise of these unfortunate women could be the work of multiple killers. Hopefully we'll have an answer soon. The next story takes us to the small city of Little Rock in Arkansas. Since August 2020, four people have been stabbed by a mysterious assailant, and three of them, unfortunately, succumbed to their injuries. The last reported attack was in April 2021, but as the killer has not been apprehended, it can't be guaranteed that more lives will not be lost to them. Unlike many serial killers, where they have a preferred type of victim, the Little Rock Killer seems to choose his victims at random, and there are no clear motives for the crimes that have yet been determined. The last person confirmed to have been attacked by the mysterious madman was 40-year-old Marlon Franklin. Just after 6.30am on April the 12th, 2021, Marlon is randomly attacked on the street by an unknown assailant. Police officers quickly arrive at the scene, and although he doesn't die instantly, Marlon's injuries are so severe that he does die shortly afterwards. So what do we know about the suspect? Well, we can get an idea of what he looks like based upon some surveillance footage that was released after the death of Marlon. This footage shows the killer prowling the streets of Little Rock and in the video you can see the suspect walking hurriedly through the streets in the early hours of the morning. Although detectives haven't released any names of interest, they do believe the killer is a black man standing six feet in height and is a member of the community. So someone in the local area unwittingly interacts with this killer on a daily basis. At the time of this recording, there is currently a $20,000 reward being offered for any information that leads to the apprehension of the killer. Hopefully this will motivate someone to give a name and the killer can finally be caught. So those are just three identified serial killers that may still be at large in their communities. Do you think they will be caught this year? Do you know of any other relevant information that wasn't included in today's video? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you'd like to hear some more grim stories in the future, please remember to like, subscribe and click the notification bell so that you can be informed of any future videos posted by this channel. Until then,